I'm going to take the wood truck from the Dollar Tree. I also got this sign from the Dollar Tree. I am going to remove the pumpkins from the truck because I did have something else in mind with this truck. And I'm just scoring it using an X-Acto knife and I just go back and forth on both sides until I can kind of wiggle it off. It did come off pretty easy. I didn't have to struggle too hard with it and then after I took the pumpkins off I did sand the bed of the truck just so that there were no ridges or bumpy edges or anything like that then I'm going to take some wood filler and fill in the holes on the sign and on the truck after I've gone ahead and done that I am going to paint the back side of the sign using the white chalk paint from Waverly and I am just doing a very messy coat of this I don't cover the entire thing I wanted it to look old and weathered so there will be some spots showing through that didn't get covered up but that's exactly how I wanted it and then after I do that I am going to take some apple barrel paint in the shade Atlantis and I am going to use that to paint my truck so there are a couple things in this video, or a couple issues, <laughs> where my memory is full. So would it be one of my videos if you couldn't see something? Really, yeah, it happens like in every single video. So just keep that in mind <laughs> during this video. There are a couple things, like this for example, where you didn't see me draw on those lines. So I just took a paint pen, drew some vertical lines on there, and or I guess however you're looking at it horizontal and tried to sand them down and it didn't work too well so I did go over it with a little bit more chalk paint just so that they were a little bit more subtle and then I did take some more sandpaper and go around all the edges of the sign like I said I wanted it to look very rustic and weathered and I love how on the corners of each of the little slats you can see the natural wood show through or natural you know board <laughs> so after that you can see again my memory was full and I didn't know it but I painted the bed of the truck I don't know what that part's called but I just painted it with the craft smart wood stain in brown and then I'm taking some black chalk paint and going around the tires and then after the tire part I go on the wheels with just some silver chalk paint. I believe it was just silver lining from Waverly. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. Just, uh, you know, tried to stay in the lines as best I could without uh, messing up. <laughs> so after I am done doing that, I am going to take some of these little Jenga pieces that you get at the Dollar Tree and I am wanting to make this truck raised off of the sign. So I'm going to put those under there and then I'm taking a popsicle stick so that I can measure about how far it needs to be from the back. I wanted a piece to connect the truck and the board on the back, if that makes sense, so that things didn't fall out of the truck. So I just measured that and then I stained that with the exact same color that I did for the bed of the truck. And then I'm also going to stain that the jenga blocks that same color as well so they all sort of match even though you won't really see the jenga blocks because they'll just be hidden in the back so i just painted both of those and my idea for this is if they are if it's raised i can put basically anything in the back of the truck so this sign will be usable all year round i can put a tree in there for christmas i could do a you know flowers or whatever in for springtime so I just wanted this to be a interchangeable truck so I'm going to take some more of that stain that I used on the bed of the truck and I am going over the little hubcaps is that what they're called I think I don't know I don't know much about cars <laughs> but I just wanted it to look a little bit dirty a little bit uh, you know like it's been driven so I'm just brushing that along the top of the any those edges and then taking a paper towel and wiping it to, just so that it looks kind of smeared I guess would be the word <laughs> if I'm explaining any of this well you can see what I'm doing and then I'm gonna go on to the little door part as well just to give it a little bit more detail to kind of make it stand out a little bit so I just do the exact same thing, wipe a little on, wipe a little off. 
And after I am done with all of that, I am going to glue it all together in a minute. We'll, we'll see once I'm done with this. Here you go. <laughs> so I'm going to take those two Jenga pieces and I'm going to put them on the bed of the truck so that when I have something that I want to put in there, that's what it's going to rest on. So I just put two across the bed of the truck and then I'm going to put another on the front of the truck just to give it some more support and then I'm just gonna glue that right on to the sign oh and this <laughs> I'm taking that uh, popsicle stick part gluing it right to the back of the bed of the truck like I said just so that it holds everything in place and things aren't falling out and I just glue it right on and then after that, I cut out this little farmer's market vinyl decal from my Crooked. Any vinyl decals I make in my videos are for sale, so if you want to check those out in my Instagram or my Facebook account, you can message me and I'm happy to make something for you. So I just put this on the top and then I got these little table accent pumpkin things from Target Dollar Spot for a dollar and I thought they were super cute. So I grabbed some of that, I grabbed some raffia, and I ended up cutting some pieces up. And the easiest way for me to do this was to wrap the raffia around the pumpkin. So instead of like shoving the raffia in the truck first, I found this to be the easiest way. So I just wrapped it around the pumpkins and then put the pumpkins inside of the truck. So you can see that I can fit three pumpkins, you know, on top of each other in the truck so there is quite a bit of room that I will be able to fit many other things in this truck I thought it was so cute this next project I'm gonna make a wreath I have been super into these colors for fall the like mauvey muted pink kind of colors I just I think they're adorable so I grabbed this wreath from I think Joann's these leaves came from Michael's these two flowers came from Joann's as well, and I think I got them at 30 or 40% off, so a couple dollars per thing of flowers. Then the little cream bush, I don't know exactly what it's called, I also got from Michael's. And then the eucalyptus leaves I got from Walmart. Honestly, Michael's is like my favorite place to buy florals. They can be a little pricey, but if you get them on sale and use a coupon, totally worth it in my opinion. Just the quality and ugh, they are just so dang cute. But you can feel free to use any kind of florals that you want. There's lots of florals from the Dollar Tree, but this is just what I got. So I'm going to take my eucalyptus leaves first and I'm going to cut them up into little stems and I am going to push them into my wreath and then I like to use floral wire just so that I'm not hot gluing things to the wreath itself so that I can use them in the future. I just don't want a hot glue mess so it's just easier for me to put wire through and wire it all together. So I just go through and do the entire wreath in some eucalyptus, uh, wire it all together and uh, then I'll move on to the next part. So after I'm done with that, I'm going to take these leaves. I thought these were so pretty. I loved the colors of them, the fall and just, I don't know. I just, when I saw them, I was like, I have to have those. So originally I thought that I was going to do quite a bit of these leaves. And then I decided that I just wanted the smaller leaves and I took some bigger ones off and just kind of put them in leaf by leaf. And then I'm going to take the cream little bush berry things and <laughs> cut some of those up. And then also I just stuck them in to the uh, wreath, <laughs> if I can talk today, I just stuck them into the wreath and made sure they were all going the same way and then I also cut up the flowers by stem and then I just started putting them anywhere and everywhere that I thought would look good and I did this with both both sets of flowers and I did end up using all of the flowers in each bunch and I just filled it in where I thought that 
he was looking a little sparse. And honestly, I could probably go back in and put even more flowers in this wreath or more greenery or whatever. I could make it look a little bit more full if I wanted, but I do love the way that this wreath turned out. I love the light pinks and the creams and the sunflowers. I just, it makes my heart happy. I really, really like this one. For this next project, you're going to take a pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. They have plain pumpkins out right now like craft pumpkins. I should have bought some, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna take this pumpkin and turn it on the back and fill in the holes. After I've done that, I'm going to sand the wood filler down just to make it all nice and smooth. And then I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go over this entire pumpkin. And like I said, again, my memory was full and I didn't know. So there will be some parts missing on how I added the grooves to the pumpkins or to this pumpkin specifically just the edges and how I detailed that you'll see it on another pumpkin on how I did it I basically just take some mineral chalk paint and go follow the grooves of the pumpkin if I'm making any sense at all you'll see in, in a second but I use my heat gun to dry in between coats super super helpful so you can see i added the detail here but you didn't see it but this is what i made it look like i'll show you how i did that on another pumpkin so that you can see how i did it but i took this harvest word from the dollar tree and i just dabbed the steel chalk paint on top of that so it was a little less shiny so here's another little pumpkin i'm gonna mix pumpkin and truffle from Waverly and I am going to paint my pumpkin. I wanted it more of a rusty orange rather than like a bright pumpkin orange if that makes sense. So I just covered this entire thing and then I'm going to grab some of the darker truffle part of my little mixture and that's where I'm going to add in the lines and the little grooves. I just like I said I just follow the natural groove of a pumpkin basically to make it look like that. <laughs> And I just keep going over it layer by layer, adding darker spots, adding lighter spots until it looks the way that I like it. So you can kind of see what I'm doing right here. And then after that is all done, I am going to grab another one of those pumpkins from that same Target dollar spot little bag and to add on to this pumpkin. So I'm doing like three pumpkins in one time. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to my original pumpkin and I'm going to de-stress the edges of the pumpkin just to make it look a little bit more weathered and then I'm going to take some jute and I wanted to wrap the entire stem in twine so I just started by doing a little bit of hot glue and wrapping it around the stem of the pumpkin and I just go around it until the entire stem is completely covered really pretty simple and easy if you're hearing things in the background that would be my five-year-old coming into my room so don't don't mind the noises that come from my house and you know I have I have three kids under five <laughs> so it, it is very noisy in my home so don't mind that but I just go ahead and wrap the twine all the way around the pumpkin stem and when I get to the top I just kind of curve it around just so that it covers the top of the stem. And then to finish it off, just add a little bit of hot glue to the back and cut off the remainder. So after I've done that, I just kind of get everything situated to where I want it. I did tie a little jute bow to glue onto the orange pumpkin. I just thought that it tied in nicely with the jute stem down to the you know little jute bow. Thought it was really cute. So I just glued these two pumpkins together, put my harvest sign where I wanted it, glued my other pumpkin down, and then glued the harvest sign down as well. And then I'm gonna take that original leaf and bow that came on the pumpkin, I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the harvest. I'm just going to take that steel color chalk paint, just kind of dabbing over it to get the shininess down. And then I'm going to add the raffia bow on top and that is it. 
super easy, so cute. I thought all these projects turned out super, super adorable, so super excited. And that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you liked these projects. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.